All right, so we're recording. So today is, let's see, we're live. So today is August 20th, 2018. I'm here with my friend Mark Hazelwood on episode 220. I love even numbers. So look at him. You look so dapper and handsome today, my friend. Not that you don't always, but uh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Did you even Thanks know what you me. did you even know what you were getting into? Not and at all. Our I was wonderful friend. As to why the hell I was showing up here in the first place? Because Boris, Boris, we love. Hey, Frederick, what's up? Let us know you can hear us or see us. Boris is a mutual friend of ours. Um, he's so talented. He's lived a thousand lives in one lifetime. And Boris said, "You have to meet." Mark Hazelwood. And I said, fantastic, because whoever Boris says to meet, that's who I meet. All right, so that's what we do. And so you were kind enough, the first time you showed up, I screwed up on the invitation. I thought I, I screwed up and, no. and, and wasn't dressed properly. No, so no, 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 oh my <laughs> God, that could have happened, but that's not what happened. <laughs> right. What happened was I didn't expect you because I had, for, I had not put it on the calendar properly. Oh, okay. So, yes, we would have just, as, as we say up here, we'll just escort you to a private room, Mr. Hazelwood, and we will make sure that whatever you're wearing is going to be fine. So, give him some love. I couldn't tag him, but I'm going to tag him later, so I'm expecting a ton of people to show up uh, later on on the show. But obviously, they can hear us or see us. Uh, Zamfira is on. So, if you've done Facebook Live before? No. Okay, no. so what happens is these friends... Uh, there's people that are watching that I can't see, and then there's people that come on that are watching, and that's what you see here, but you don't have your... Vito, what's up? Uh, Drunk Kia, hi guys, we love you guys. We love all our family. So, Mark has probably one of the most interesting backgrounds, and when I do a show, I usually do my research, but if you really Google Mark Hazelwood, or you go to his website, or you try to look him up, uh, there's nothing better than hearing Mark Hazelwood talk in person. Uh, so I got a wonderful earful of that for the last 30 minutes. I'm fascinated. I have a thousand questions, uh, but give him some love. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So give us a little background on you. Uh, you don't have to start with I'm, I was born and then 25 minutes were in first grade. I want you to give us kind of the um, Cliff's notes of that whole story. But you have an interesting background. Well, at a certain time, I kind of realized that I was... Uh... You know, I was trying to explain to someone the other day that I did not have a silver spoon growing up in my mouth. I said, it's maybe a half a silver. <laughs> but then as I kept explaining, I realized it was a full silver. And that was really the first time in my life when I was speaking to this girl. Oh my God, I was kidding myself. Because, you know, I was comparing to myself, myself with other people. I grew up with a Musical famous father. Musical royalty, right? Yeah, with a famous father. And, you know, with... Uh, an estate with maids quarters and fountains and and electric gates and it's it's anyway it's my huge. dad produced Nancy and, and Frank Sinatra I mean, back when I was a kid and so I grew up around this musical environment very privileged but I had friends that were also privileged and I, I kind of compared myself to them and you know they ended up with these huge businesses like one of my best friends actually inherited a, a slaughterhouse business from his dad and ended up being a multimillionaire I never became a multimillionaire but anyway I still had a very banner childhood to put it you had a I love it a banner <laughs> childhood and your dad helped produce Nancy Sinatra's most famous song, which I think we all know that song. I don't care how old you are or young you are, these boots are made for walking, right? Yeah, well, my dad was in a bar one time, as he explains it, and uh, he, uh, that's where he spent a lot of his life, is in bars, okay? He liked to drink, he liked to hang out in bars, that was his thing. And one time he, in Arizona, he, where I was born, he observed this cowboy and he had his lady with him, or there's his wife or his girlfriend, I don't know. And as he was pulling her out the door, yelling at her, at her he said something very negative to her. He said, well, you know, one of these days these boots are going to walk all over you. My dad perked up his ears, <laughs> wrote down that line, wrote a whole song about it. Nice. Nancy got interested in it and twisted it around and made it a women's lip song. It, but really it started was. out really negative. How funny. And that video, I still remember that video. 
That video is her. She's got her go-go boots on, basically. Right. She looks amazing. That, yeah. That's, you know what? I think people, uh, that song is still powerful. People play it all the time. There's very few people, once you hear it, especially the beginning of it is so good and the chorus. I don't know. Anyway, so that's not what this show is about, but I want to give people kind of a background, like who's Mark Hazelwood or how did Mark Hazelwood start? That doesn't define who you are. So right. you had this, you had this, as you just defined, a privileged upbringing. And then what happens later? When you become an adult, what, what's your first journey? Oh, geez. My first journey. I have not prepped Mark for any of these questions. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, draw I'm drawing a <laughs> blank. Is, what is my first you journey? You just talked about all your life. journeys. I love it. So I wanted you to share right. with them. You have so many journeys. And I will post his. Well, okay. Go ahead. I, um, Here it comes. I met a girl when I was 21, okay, and she was only 16 at the time. And we ended up having a baby together. And, you know, I love this girl, but we broke up. I, I, and then after we became best friends, funny thing, we became best friends after, you know, we broke up. After the breakup. Right. And I started falling in love with her again, but for the right reasons, not for what I think I could have changed her into since I was felt I like I was kind of suspended golly being five years older than her and having had this grand background and, she, and hers was not so much right <laughs> so just leave it at that well at a certain point after we broke up I was in Miami and she was in LA and she died um, we had a kid together at that point so I ended up raising my son on on my own all alone but a funny thing happened about six months after she died. As I was sitting down, perfectly conscious, I suddenly, I can't explain how or why, or even the transition, but I went into a different realm and she was there. That's all I can say, a dimension, a realm. And so what happened to you? So Asher, are you, are you doing your normal things that you already sat down for the evening and you're relaxing with a cup of you tea? You know, I don't even good... remember exactly. But none of the times that I got together with her, and I only got together with her six times over 15 years, <laughs> was I ever on drugs or asleep or anything like that. It was always usually just, you know, sitting down quietly. So you had a post-death, human death, uh, interaction with your ex, who's the mother of your son. Right. Well, let's, let's just say this this realm was very much like this one here. In other words, there was communication. Things were solid. You could touch. She actually showed up with a guy the first time I met her. Just like I usually saw her after we broke up. She showed up with a guy. So what are you thinking the first time this happens? This is fascinating. Uh, okay. I just uh, it was quick. It was a quick meeting. Uh, this is what I thought. I love that you call it a meeting. It's just, it's this, it's this interaction, right? And you're, are you the whole time going, what is happening to no, me? No, no, I was just glad to see her there. I love and that. I, and I, and I asked her directly. Now, the only thing really different about this realm was, was a couple things. It was, it was lighter, even though it was solid, it was lighter. And there was no talking. It was all mind-to-mind -mind communication. That's the big difference. And the first thing I asked her was, well, how does it feel, like, feel being dead? And she looked at me and she kind of dissed me. She said, you know, it's obvious I'm not dead. I just don't have a body like you now in, in your realm. So next time we get together, ask better questions. And she split. Wow. So I was, I was basically dissed. You ticked her thoughts. off. I think left. right, exactly. You, the, you, you, you ticked the other realm off and they right. had enough of you, Mark. Right, exactly. <laughs> I thought, and I thought about, you know, she's right. <laughs> she was exactly right. That's the right. first question I would ask, though. I'm oh not my God, dead. What's I mean, the consciousness goes on forever. So why would you even suggest that I'm dead? When you're sitting here right in front of me communicating, it doesn't make any sense to even ask that stupid question, which I did. Anyway, we got together about five times more after that. One time, her son, our son together, was a teenager and I was ready to disown him. That's the only time we didn't have mind-to-mind -mind communication. But we had this hug, and this hug, this hug wouldn't last long enough. It was still going on today. That's how sweet it was. And when I was put back down in this realm, which is hard to do, after that hug. From this point on, I still can't remember why I was upset at him. 
she deleted it. I love it. So you had this emotional connection, right. a real super emotional and connection. And I suppose, you know, enough to make not, you get teary eyed. Right, okay. yeah. Until this day, I still think about that day. Because I, I never remembered why I was upset to him. I, I can't. I can't go back there. Intellectually, it's not there So she anymore. came to you, do you think, at times where it was important right. during yours Correct. and your son's relationship or your son's life especially? Right. Correct. So she knew. Okay. So she was still connected. Right. Now, Who was the I, dude but, in the beginning? It was just a friend of hers that she, I guess... I mean, I gotta <laughs> know. You're bringing somebody to our, our ghostly meeting? I don't know how no, else to it's say not, it. No, it was I know it's not ghostly. It was not I, ghostly at all. It was like, just like... Being with you right this but minute. But you're bringing your friend to the other... I'm coming to your dimension and all of a sudden you're bringing your friend? Like I don't know. Maybe she felt like she needed some no, I love it. I think, support. You know what that does? It, 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 it humanizes it, for lack of a better word. It makes it more relatable. Right. Sure, I'd bring friends along. If I'm <laughs> right. going to come see you in another dimension, i got to bring my whole posse with me. Right. At least one person <laughs> that you know, I'm hanging with here. I love that. Right. That's awesome. All right, so you had... But then the visits stopped. Okay, the, that was after the last visit. After the last visit, well, during the last visit, she let me know something that I thought was really kind of significant. And so I said, you know, every time we get together, and we've only got together about you know five or six times since you transitioned over to this other realm, I begin to question that we even got together about two weeks later, just because, you know, my realm is kind of dense and it's hard to even fathom. So I want you to affect, I said, since this is so significant, I want you to affect my realm in two different ways. One was through the computer and one was through law. I'm not going to get into exactly what those things were, but she did them. And so I, I guess I had to accept what she was saying. She said she was going to reincarnate as my first grandchild. Now, my, my, our one son was just dating this girl. He, he, no one was together in that way. But within 72 hours, my son said that he has been holding back something from me for the last month or two. And was very scared because I told him always to wear protection sure. and, and wait till later on in life. And he let me know that his girlfriend was pregnant. And that kind of blew me away that these events happened within yeah, a, few, a short period wow. of time. So now that kid, it, I live with that kid, by the way, today. He's, uh, he's going to be 18 in a month or so. No, wow. a couple weeks, actually. So you've always been a part of his life, a right. big part of his life, Yeah, right? exactly. Well, more so now than, than earlier, because my son got a new wife and has a new family, and basically it was he was sort of abandoned because he, my son, this is too much. So I picked up the slack the last couple of years. I mean, he's a normal kid. We have a normal relationship. He's dated this one girl for two and a half years, which is kind of unusual for being, you know, that age and sticking around one one girl for. Because you're long. thinking of your perspective. You're looking at it through your 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 scope. You're right. Yeah, my eyes. And I, my, get I get. I get. In it. my world, that's that's a long time for a teenager to spend. But they just love each other. These two. I love it. Yeah. She's Hispanic and got the big. Family, brothers they love and it. sisters, and so it, he probably is drawn to that. Uh, yeah, her, yeah that exactly. Because you know he was kind of cut out of family life, you know, this time around. And so, what keeps you busy? What What do you do on a daily basis? We were talking a little bit about this. So I know you're into crypto, right? All right, okay. But that's a relatively new thing. What have you? Once you um, you had your son, then you. Cer certainly are a huge part of your grandson's life but what was your focus uh, during those times did you uh, work were you a writer were you a singer we talked a little bit about that well, um, I did write a couple books at one point but um, I won't really discuss them much today <laughs> because, <laughs> because they were non-fiction books and it turned out a lot of the, the material was uh, disinformation that was fed to me by uh, the powers that be out there that I didn't realize was disinformation. But I pulled together all this research and I got a, kind of a following. Uh, what was I, the topic? Do I, can I ask the topic? Planet X. Oh, that's right, okay, so that's the, your... One of the books was called Blindsided, which actually was still... Planet of, X, is that the, is that the, is this the planet that is, the mystery planet that supposedly is part of our 
a solar system. Correct. I have done no research on this, right, so I'm yeah. pulling this. Exactly. Okay, so that's what it is about. Right. All right, so there are there's some scientific communities that believe that. Okay. The thing about it is, the reason why it's being pushed is because, you know, I don't know if anyone understands our government lies to us all the time. I'm pretty sure our our group here understands. All right. Okay. That. So you're, uh, you're you're in a safe. I'm a safe we know they're lying in environment. And one of the me. things they use in order to cover up things is they create a controlled opposition. Let's say, so they'll create a whole different subject matter around something to deflect away from the reality. The reality is that we're in, we're entering into a whole different quadrant of our solar, our our universe. All right. It's totally energetically different. We've actually sent probes out there to see what it does to people. And there's actually, there's actually a star system that's already entered into that. And we've watched the sun get a thousand times brighter, as in uh, the, the whole surface of, of that sun, in that uh, lift off. <laughs> and we're getting ready for that. And part of the deflection was to create this whole Planet X concentration. To, instead of giving us the reality of what they know is going to happen. Oh, so Planet X was the deflection. disinformation, and that's what I wrote about. Oh, and so is Planet X not real? I'm not saying it's not real, but it's it's being used that that whole subject. That was the lesser of to, two evil to, to, to deflect people away from the reality Understood. of which they've been getting ready. So they built all these underground cities, getting ready for this event that should happen in, let's say, 10 years or so. However, what they should be getting ready for is raising their consciousness. Because if you go back in history, all the ancient texts all over the world, they talk about this event. And it has to do with, uh, for the people that are ready, they, they suddenly get elevated. Their DNA changes when this event happens. So it doesn't affect them like the rest of the people. To an event here on Earth. Uh, I'm fascinated. It, it, it'll be our sun that actually does this several times. It goes to this strobe event, and it changes us. For the people that are ready, it's bliss, okay, and elevated consciousness. For the people that are not, they may experience a whole different thing, calamitous events. So there's a split that happens. In other words, I guess in the traditional uh, uh, text that everyone's familiar with, the Bible, it would be called the... Uh, the ascension, no, not the ascension. What is it? The upliftment. Sure. Um, it's like it's it's pa it's rapture. The, the rapture. rapture. That's that, that's what I was looking the for. Rapture. It's the rapture because we we're gonna have all kinds of alien help. You know, for people that are really negative, they're gonna be left on the surface to experience this. For people that are ready to go, they may not even need to depart. I'm are not you ready sure. to go? Oh, I'm definitely ready. I'm on edge. <laughs> right? And then there'll be people, sure neutral of. people, that they're not negative and they're not ready to graduate. They may be taken to a different solar system where there's another 3D realm and you know, they'll live out another 25,900. Another 24,900. Not realm, another 3D world. It. Another 3D world. Yeah. I mean, this is just all speculation no, I, as, far like as, as far as how is this going to actually play out who knows? who knows i don't know i'm just i'm just regurgitating what i've but heard what i, what I love to. so you told me a story which i don't know was in your bio or not but you talked about having cancer right so talk about because a lot of people on here um they've been through cancer we've had a lot, had a lot of cancer survivors but right. you took you took a very um unique unique approach to that i think Although people talk about it all the time, you actually lived it, but you also experienced some setbacks. So if you can share your cancer story with them, I think it would be helpful. Okay. Uh, I was, a, I guess, a vegetarian. I didn't know what vegan was when I was a teenager. And one of the reasons why is because my best friend, his all, name was also Mark, took me on a tour of his dad's slaughterhouse mm. in downtown Los Angeles. That's a one-on-one -on -one tour. I was alone with him. He showed me every part of the process. And I could see the terror on, on these uh, poor animals' faces before they got strung up. And I don't even want to explain all the different oh, things God. that they did to this animal. Uh, anyway, scary. so I was a vegetarian for a while. And then, you know, when you're a vegetarian for that long, that early in life, you can't really eat meat that you know, afterwards, even though I let myself go back to it sure. here and there a little bit. 
By the time I got to my mid 40s though, I was just, all this diet discipline and stuff, it was driving me crazy and I wanted to taste anything and everything again. I realized I couldn't really digest meat so I started treating it like gum, which I don't recommend to anyone. <laughs> Chewing and spitting meat is just gross and it is... Yeah, if you watch that Sex in the City episode from California and the guy like chews the steak and spits it out, it's, it's nasty. Yeah, there was a, actually a boxer back in the 40s that he was like the number one guy. He used to do that too. Anyway, um, so I did this for several years and got cancer. Four stage cancer. I was really kind of cocky because I thought that, well, I'll just get rid of it, raw food. So I thought, all right, I'll go on raw food. So what does raw food include? That's just vegetables, right? That's no, you raw you vegan fruits. food, right? Raw. So, what's the difference between vegan and raw? Okay, vegan. You can eat any kind of vegan food, but it, it's cooked food. Okay, you just ah, cook that's it. the difference. According to the, the the raw food, is cooked food actually creates toxicity, such yes. that your body has to surround it with mucus in order to protect itself from yes. that toxicity, yes, and yes, that yes, creates yes. all sorts of uh, disease and problems. So, Kimber. I. Uh, Say hi, I went to on, what, hi, Say hi to Kimber. Hi to Kimber. Hi Kimber. Yeah, so that's that's always what I've wondered about raw. So raw actually is there's no cooking involved, right? Or heating, or a certain degree of heating. Well, yeah, I think 118 degrees is, right. is the cutoff point. But what what it does is when you eat just raw food, it, your body digests it so easy. You know, it just slips right down into the small intestine within an hour. It doesn't digest in your stomach for eight hours or anything. So it leaves your body. With a lot more energy, to for up upkeep, you know, to clean out all old stuff and and to go forward. So sure. that's why it's so much better. All right. Now I'm on raw food because I can't get away with it anymore. You know, I always wanted to be a raw foodist, but I never had the discipline. I tried several different times. I succeeded for a short period of time, but now my body won't let me. <laughs> well, but you also so you had you had disease in your body right and so you you were told once you you were eating fruits and vegetables but for right. you because of the cancer um, you couldn't eat the fruit because sugar talk about the sugar and cancer okay so I went on raw food on my own and it wasn't going away and that concerned me so I realized there was an institute there's several they're all over there's an institute down in South Florida uh, by the name of Hippocrates Health Institute and it's been curing all the incurables for over 50 years you won't hear about it from any of the MSN channels or certainly the, the doctors because uh, you know they got a lockdown on you know how they treat disease and it's all cancerous how they treat it. I know. So I went down there and the first thing they said, okay, you just have to cut out fruit because cancer loves sugar. But it turns out that once you get that level of cancer, there's always some sort of latent tiny little tumors that are just sitting there waiting. So I can't have any sweets ever. Whereas if I were to become a raw foodist in the beginning, or even a fruitarian, and then I alkaline my whole body, because you know, cancer only grows in a toxic environment, uh, then I would never get cancer and I could eat as much fruit as I want. But now, because of the way I did it, I can't eat fruit at all. I can't have any of it. So what is, a, what is a meal, I'm fascinated by this, because I, I, I think my body would do so much better if I could be more toward raw. It would, uh, it would, but but it, what 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 is a what is a what's lunch for you? What's dinner for you? I'm just and we don't have to go into a ton I of meals. I'm okay, I don't really have any traditional type meals. Okay, okay. I eat go. whenever I feel like eating. Sometimes I eat for emotional reasons. Sometimes I eat because I just. And bored. is it all fruit? It's, I'm, I'm sorry. It's no, all vegetables. It's all vegetables. It's. I mean, I can make it interesting, but I usually don't. I don't even bother with it. I, I don't really care so much about food anymore because I realize, you know, for people that have heard this, that we can actually take ourselves off food. All right, so yeah. I was, that's where I was going with this. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for going with the line there. I All appreciate right. it. Uh, so talk about that because I read, I read an interesting article. I don't know if it was New York Times. It was somewhere. Right. And it was talking about how people... Um, have supposedly and probably really lived on no food for years and years and years. So, right, well, I, give I've, us a little, I've give studied, us a little idea I, about what that. I've like. studied at least fifty people over the years. I've never been able to discipline myself to, to do it myself, except I follow my body now. My body gives me pain if I go off of raw food, 
If I eat sugar, if I eat any fruit, it gives me pain. So now I'm a slave to pain. So I have to be on raw food now. That's I found my motivation, my body. Okay. Over the years, I, I tried it. to force myself. I couldn't. Somehow, my higher self worked out a little system. Well, we'll, we'll get you to get you. Get cancer first, and then you'll find your motivation. I got you. Sometimes <laughs> we'll it works like that. Put a knife at your head, <laughs> at your neck, all day long. So you'll be forced. You're you'll you'll be find forced. your motivation. So I, it, love it. Fine, I finally got it. But as far as not eating goes, uh, I study a guy by the name of Merham Kesh, and he talks about people who don't eat food uh, in relation to what what they really live off of. He says we all really live off of plasma. And the majority of the plasma we get is from the air that the Earth creates. Wait, the, so when I think of plasma, I think blood. So what's what's plasma? How do we plasma, how do we ingest I, that? Okay, plasma you can ingest the air because it's a, it's a combination. I can't explain. It, I'm not a scientist, but so, it's some sort of energetic combination of uh, of let's say magnetic and electrical energy that's in the air that the, that the earth creates the sun creates it too unlike that's what right, you hear you or what you hear in science so that you can you get most of it from the earth's atmosphere and so when people say they're breatharian that's a misnomer okay they actually sure they get the plasma through the air, breathing. Oh, I'm sorry. What do they call themselves? A breatharian. Breatharian. That's <laughs> right. like a vegetarian. Right, right. But you. <laughs> but 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 I'm you learning. go. You, you, I just a breatharian. First, okay. First, there's. Well, let's just get down to vegan. You get the vegan, and then there's raw vegan, and then there's fruitarian, supposed to be a cut above that, and then there's liquidarian. People who live only on liquids, and then you finally give up liquids, and you're so-called breatharian. But that, that's a misnomer. Do it, liquid, liquids don't include booze because that's bad. <laughs> right? I'm sorry. Well, liquids are supposed to be, you know, that's raw. Supposed to be the good stuff. Raw vegan. No raw potato juice. None right. of that stuff. Well, you could get a raw potato. Sure, that would work. And it has to be fermented. Work with me, Mark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You go back to you. All right. So, a so breatharian. Then, right. That's fascinating to me. So, do you actually believe you've you've studied people? So, people actually don't eat because when I read that right. first thing, I thought, oh, this is the same people that say that there, there's a Russian guy who's 195 years old somewhere in the in the hills of Uxbanistan or whatever. So, like, you just, sometimes you hear it and you go, that can't possibly be. But that's because our minds have been trained to think very like this. And so anything that's outside the box, we immediately question. We've been indoctrinated by these uh, criminals that run our government and our institutions into uh, believing too. only what they want us to believe. In fact, any time they run across anybody that uh, actually does any of these things, they make fun of them on the, uh, the, the, me the major media on purpose so that people don't go there. Because, you know, if you, go, if you start going, heading this direction, you realize you get more energy, you become lighter, you feel more like a teenager when you become lighter, your thoughts come to you faster, and the deep state, if you want to label them that, they can't control people like that. They can't control people that are free and are thinking for themselves and they're doing things outside of the box that they've created that they can control. I think most of our audience is forward thinking. So no, right. you're, in a, you're in a good place to talk about that because you Well, may I not... just mentioned that. I don't need to get no, into it. No, I like it. I like it. All right. It. It's true in almost every subject matter out there. All right. So you There's used. A... Your raw, you adjusted it, but you used raw food, and now you are, I don't know what they term it anymore, but you don't have, there's no, you're cancer free. You might have it lurking, like you talked about right. earlier, right? Exactly. Which we all do, and I think that's a interesting thing that people well, don't want to accept. That is true, accept. cancer's always in the body. It's always there, and then you've got the alkaline versus pH balance. Right. You've got your food that you eat and what you feed your body. Uh, I'm fascinated by not eating at all. I would hope that those people were super thin and looked amazing. Well, um, actually, one of the guys that I studied was this guy that constantly worked out. And he's buff, as you can believe. Do we like him? What? Do we like him? Well, he's, I'm not really he's, sure I like people that work out that all much. Oh, right. Well, he's, he's got tattoos all over his head. Okay, so we love him. All right, okay. And, uh, you know, he's done it. And people that don't eat when, when they're... Uh, social 
group goes and eats, they, they usually don't sit with them. They go find something else to do during that short period of time. Fascinating. I mean, it, it sounds like a dream. It's just that I think that you have to be in that, don't you believe that you have to be in that mindset? You have to be willing to um, do it like him. I'm sorry, Kimber. Well, we have to ask. He's working out 24-7. I don't know if I like people that work out 24-7 or not. Well, no, he was not working out 24-7, but I just perceive him as, some, as one of those guys who, who no, got out it. there and did a lot of exercise. Anyone who gets up at 4 in the morning and runs, I love them, and I want to give them a giant hug, but I also want to hug it out of them. I want them to stop. I got up at 2 a.m. the other day, and I went to the gym for about 10 minutes and did some ultra cardio. All right, we're still friends because you've got a fantastic story. <laughs> Um, all right. So what? So we're way, we're way past our time because you're fascinating. All right. So what? What are some things that you can leave them with? What? What would you like them to know about you, or some words of wisdom? Uh, and we're going to share. Mark does have a health page that we will share the uh, website information with after the show. But what do you want to share with them? What do you want to? I mean, we've been all over the universe and the third and fourth dimension, which I freaking, I freaking love. I mean, it's awesome. Um, I love to talk to somebody, and I want to share this with you in person, live, that I love to talk to somebody who thinks outside of the box or the world or the universe because I was I born believe, outside the box. I, know, I was raised outside the box. I know. It's hard for me to even imagine the box. I, I can see it. I, I mean, I, I but look you, at do it. Do you but... know how many people aspire to be like that they they have a similar thought process but they don't have either the power or they don't feel like they have the power so sometimes these shows the reason i do shows that are completely off center of anything that i normally do is because i feel like people really do respond to it um and so i think people have responded which you you haven't seen the comments because you you took your glasses off but right. i promise you later once we become friends on facebook I'll tag you and you'll be well, able to I'll, see. I'll let them see me with my glasses. I guess. Oh, yeah. Your glasses look great. You look amazing no matter what. All right, so anything, any parting words of wisdom since we're past time that you want to share with them? Um, anything that you want to end the show on? Yeah, sure. Very shortly in this world, within a, probably a five to ten year period, we're going to be handed technology that's been suppressed. This $21 trillion that supposedly the Pentagon lost, no, it was put in uh, projects to create a whole secret space program of technology that's out of this world that makes Star Trek look like the Stone Age. We have that top technology, we've created that technology, and it's been held back from us. And they're now pushing to give it back to us. That's what I want to leave people All right. with. So Mark Hazelwood, guys, he's got a great story. Uh, we're gonna again. You want to look him up? He's awesome. What a blessing to have you on the show, my Thank friend. You. I love it, love it, love it. It's been good. And then if you have questions for him, um, you can reach out to me on theTedShow.com, or you can reach out on this uh, this show. Uh, but we we encourage you because I know there's a lot of people watching in silence because we're a little outside the quote unquote norm, right? And so when you do shows like that. People are not exactly sure how to respond, and they're not sure um, what they want to ask, uh, but they have questions. So please ask the questions. We love you guys. Uh, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, August 21st. But thank you, Mark, for being here. Sure. All right. We love you.